Previously on South End United, Road to Glory, Karima. I left you hanging on penalties in the Capital One Cup against Arsenal, which we were able to pull through and pull out the win in penalties over Arsenal. So on top of progressing in the Capital One Cup, we also played a couple of league games and drew every single one of them. We've gotten four or five draws in the league in the championship in a row now. And it's something I'm going to need to address in this episode. So that's what happened last time. And let the glory continue. Hey guys, how's it going? The Master Fox here. Welcome to episode 7 now of the South End United Road to Glory career mode. And if you couldn't tell in the whole, you know, pre-video build up, the whole recap of the previous episode, I've got a bit of a cold at the moment because currently it is winter if you live in, you know, the, the more awesome hemisphere. But um, yeah, at the moment I'm currently, we're going through winter and while I don't like necessarily get like hay fever or any of that sort of, um, uh, any of those sort of things that you get if you're a pussy, I mean, I still do get a cold occasionally. So um. Uh, unfortunately, I've got a bit of a blocked nose and I'm feeling a bit meh, but at the same time, that being said, in the past like week or two, I, I, I don't know about you, but I feel like I've put in a pretty fucking solid performance. I've put out some, uh, a lot, maybe not, I've put out a lot of content. Like there was probably about six or seven days, a stretch where I had one video every day and I was super duper proud of myself. Why did I have to put in the duper? It was completely, the duper in that super duper was completely, uh, pointless. But either way, we are... I'm going to continue on here with this game, um, or with this episode, of course. The first one, the first game against Sheffield United. Nathaniel Richards with a shot, going straight to the keeper. Benzier's going to run onto that and have a shot, and it's going to be saved. Unbelievable by Howard. Great double efforts from their, um, from their keeper. And um, oh, I should probably mention, uh, on the topic of goalkeepers, I'm actually playing in this game. You might have spotted it, maybe, if you're a bit of an angle eye. But uh, I play Carl Davis pretty much every single day, but not today. In goal, I actually have... Uh, John Irvine, who is the scouted goalkeeper from Australia, who thankfully doesn't have to do anything that time. But yeah, I scouted two really good players from Australia, um, I think last season. One of the... No, yeah, three, sorry. Uh, there was Craig Edwards, and have a look at this. 90th minute, no goals. He's going to have to work here. And John Irvine, the 16-year-old from Australia, he comes for... He, oh, you what? He, <laughs> that's a bit wrong. He, he, sta he stands up when he needs to... Uh, when he, uh, what am I trying to say? The job needs to be done, and he's there to do it. And oh, that's just a sign of my tiredness and my sickness. But oh well. Regardless, moving on. Let's get on to the votes. And John Irvine had an absolute stellar performance. Like one off of Palois, who surprisingly doesn't get a vote. I know that he got a high rating in FIFA 13, but I don't know. I didn't rate him. I gave one vote to Striker. I gave two votes to Puglisi or Puglisi, whatever his name is, the Italian centre defensive midfielder. Don't play him a lot, but I decided to give him a game as well. And as well as that, yep, John Irvine, spelled J O N gets the three votes because he had a very good game and I'm very proud of it. But it's a goalless draw and it's another draw. In the last four or five league games, championship games, I have only gotten one point from the last four or five or possibly even six. I really don't even know. But it's ridiculous. And I figured we are drawing upon a crisis and that's probably the title of this video. But I mean, I decided to think something that had to change. I'd been rolling with the whole... 4-1-2-1-2 uh, two, two formation for a very long time and uh, probably because it was working well for me but now it just isn't it's like I'm not scoring that my team the team doesn't really feel that dangerous going forward it's not really that attacking uh, it doesn't feel what I'm trying to say it doesn't feel too attacking but Benzia going through on goal he got tackled but good forward pressure a good press was able to get the turnover and this is why I changed the formation to a 4-3-3 because we can get goals within five minutes of the game. Yassine Benzia, after getting tackled, uh, was able to get it back. And straight from a throw-in, not too long later, Nicholas Barcroft, who I didn't know, who isn't by any means like that strong, still somehow manages to get the inside of his shoulder in on his defender. And great running from Richards. Puts himself in a brilliant spot. And in the 21st minute, we score our third goal of the game. And this is exactly why I wanted to swap up the formation to a 4-3-3. It means that we're maybe a little bit um, vulnerable at the back. But um, if you ask me, that's not too much of an issue. If I have to concede one or two goals to get goals and win games, I'll do that. And unfortunately, pretty much um, almost immediately after kickoff of uh, scoring our third, we concede one. But it's kind of annoying because um, I pressed the B button and I thought my... Uh, controlling defender was like shoulder to shoulder with the uh, striker and unfortunately that wasn't the case so um yeah straight from kickoff we conceded our first goal and straight from kickoff of the second half we're about to concede our second goal and Salmon is going to be the goal scorer and this is horrific because I mean nothing would piss me off more than scoring three goals and having like this many draws and still getting the draw and have a look at this 
Ward, unfortunately for him, took a bad touch, but still somehow sent the ball through. Uh, Davis ran out and collected, but thankfully that wasn't going to be a goal anyway, considering it was offside. Yassine Bentea on the ball. Muro, Barcroft, Bentea kept running. Great passing, straight through the line of defence. Bentea will just smash that in the bottom left-hand corner. 4-2. Thank you very, very much. And in the 85th minute, Yassine Bentea seals it with... Is that his hat-trick? No, it's not his hat-trick. But it's his second goal. 90th minute. Surely, maybe, you wouldn't believe it. Would we get a fifth goal to just put it beyond our doubt? Richards in a Bonnie Perty. We've got the win. Can we make it stylish? No, we can't. The low cross into... I don't even want to try to pronounce that goalkeeper's name. But it's a 4-2 victory. And finally, we get three points from a game. We've been undefeated for a very long time. And I'm super stoked about that. But, you know, you got to get the three points from a game eventually. Because otherwise... You're just never, you're never going to win any. You're never going to, I mean, I'm, I was 15th until this game. You watch where I am uh, in a couple of minutes. But anyway, the votes. I decided to give one vote to Gortzka. He did well. Two votes to Nathaniel Richards and three votes to Yassine Benzia. Great game. And have a look at this. We are finally now going to be versing Brighton and Hove Albion. So, of course, um, oh, excuse me, me being a little bit of a Crystal Palace supporter, oh, not supporter, but uh, more of a, I like Crystal Palace, sucked in Brighton and that's, I really should stop talking. But anyway, look at that. We were 15th. We won one game, and we skyrocketed four spots to 11th. That's what one win will do when there are 24 teams in a league, and, you know, we're all pretty much getting the same results. I mean, one win at this point would probably could, uh, I've already said it, had the potential to take you to fifth. And you can see that the shot there went in, but it's not going to count because it's offside because it deflected off of one of their other strikers. And to be totally honest, that's not bullshit. That is completely fair. I mean, it hit one of his players and it went in the net. It was a deflection and he was offside. So, yeah, but Mikhail Smith with the shot, not able to get the goal there. We can't clear the ball yet again. They've still got a hold of it. They're passing it around and around and around and around. And how long have they had the ball for? But finally, we're able to get it back. Richards, Eccleston, and we start passing it out the back. Good, good movement out of there. Good movement out of the back. Not to just completely smash it forward and just clear it out of there, even though that's normally the better thing to do. But Eccleston... He's been a pretty good player. I don't know uh, how to really describe him, but he gets in a Barkroth who has a tremendous shot and a very good save by the goalkeeper. And um, yeah, what can you do about that, unfortunately? But yeah, the big throw from the goalkeeper into Roas. Roas, the man with the pace, and this is why he's in the team, beating Luar Luar, who's pretty quick himself, goes in a Barkroth. He'll shoot. He'll shoot. No, he won't shoot. Well, that's a bit surprising. We're about to have a replay of this. Look at this. I'm charging up my shot with Barkroth, who's in the top left-hand corner, in the bottom right-hand corner. You can see that I was powering up my shot, and he just stood there. He let it He let it hit his left foot, and it just bounced out, which is ridiculous. But the cross in, it goes. We try to clear it yet again. Whack it away. It gets touched or gets blocked. Goes into Barnes. Shots hit the post. We're still alive in this game. 90th minute. We still have not scored a goal, which is bizarre. We swapped our formation to a very attacking formation. Luke Shaw with a tremendous interception to stop the attack, get possession, uh, get possession back, and end the game. And we're still undefeated and still getting one uh, one point. But what can you do? It was weird. We played one game where we, you know, we got four bloody votes. for We got four bloody goals in that game and uh, conceded two. And now we've played another goalless draw. It's, um, what can you do? It's a bit inconsistent this season at the moment. But anyway, I gave one vote to Luke Shaw. I gave two votes to surprising Chris Keane, who got like a 9.7 rating. But there was one player who I was quite proud of or really, really happy with in that game. And that was Carl Davis. Because even though I didn't really add too many of them in there. Carl Davis actually had to deal with quite a lot of shots and um, not a lot of them were on target, but the ones that were on target, I thought, oh fuck, that's going in for a goal. But nope, he was able to pull out the bag, pull out a save. Carl Davis has had a very good start to the season and have a look at this. We were 11th. We've dropped, um, unfortunately, two points. And look at that. You can see from 8th to 12th, they're all on the same amount of points. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. We haven't played too many games. We're getting pretty close to about the third... We probably are about a third of the way into the season. But, um, yeah, unfortunately, Richards ran onto the ball there and it was picked off by the keeper. But um, we're about almost a third of the way through the season. And we're still at that point where, yet again, I'll say it, three votes can get you up five places, as we saw him previously. And have a look at this. Ben Eccleston, who else but the number 37 to score in the 37th minute? Eccleston with a goal. And I've got to say, he's been a tremendous player. Fantastic pickup from the free agents list. Ben's here with a shot. Save it, unfortunately, by the keeper. That's not going in for a goal. But, um, yeah, Eccleston, how do I like, how do I describe him? I'm like, he's pretty much like the sixth, he's pretty much like the sixth man of this football team. And I know this sixth man, what, what, would the, what would the sixth man of football? Like the twelfth man of football. He's like 
the player that sort of comes off of the bench or he's just that sort of reserve player which mixes it in well and he just does a very good job for me. He's not starting 11, but he's a phenomenal player. As a, he's a great replacement. But anyway, 85th minute, the shot was going to roll out. Tomlin somehow keeping it in. Surely that's not the Tomlin that we sold that used to be in our team. Shot, header, fell to Barnett amazingly. And in the 88th minute, he put it in for an absolute bloody cheese goal. It's, oh, it's again, like they got the ball back. They somehow kept it in. And uh, Davis passing. It's a ball. Davis passing. Oh, that was a horrendous mistake. I don't know what I was thinking there. I was just out of it for a little bit. But uh, I somehow thankfully got away with not conceding. A, 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 that would have absolutely ruined me. But thankfully, I didn't concede a uh, 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 late, like, you know, loser, I should say. But uh, thank, thankfully, that didn't happen. I just had a bit of a brain fade. But yeah, um, yeah. so we'll just give out the votes. It's another draw, son of a bitch. And uh, this time, I can feel a little bit annoyed about it because the goal was like, you know, it was a ridiculous shot. I thought it was going to roll out. It didn't. Somehow, Tomlin managed to keep it in and just leave FIFA 13's ability to just never be able to clear the fucking ball ever to do the rest and eventually get the goal. But anyway, the votes, I gave one to Carl Davis yet again, two to Paloise, and three to Eccleston. Tremendous player, and he had a very good game. But anyway, guys, that's going to do it for me. Thank you for watching this episode. We have got another episode coming out pretty soon. we got a game against Everton in the Capital One Cup semi-finals. Get ready for that. Guys, I'm your again with the Master Bucks. Let's hit your target. And guys, for this episode, I'm just going to yet again, it's the same as what I've been always asking for. It's 1,300 likes, so thank you so much for your support. And uh, I also got to say, follow me on Twitter. I recently went over 3,000 Twitter followers. So wow, that's 3,000 people that are listening to my Twitter rants and Twitter babble about bullshit. But you guys are still doing it, so thank you so much. And uh, that'll do it for me. Don't forget, like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter. And uh, yeah, I'm yours again with the Master Bucks, and peace out. Bye-bye.